Welcome back to another episode of How You Going with Jason Owen. And uh, as some of you guys might know, uh, this series is titled Life on the Land, but it's not just about life on the land. It's also about rural communities. It's also about rural businesses, rural events that have been affected by drought, COVID, bushfires, floods, you name it. It's all happened at once. And um, today I'm actually heading back to the central west of New South Wales, my home area, and I'm going to Narromine, where I'm chatting to the publicity officer of the Narromine Jets, Sally Everett. Now, Sal's a lovely lady, and we're going to have a chat about just how the drought and COVID have affected, you know, rural businesses, rural events, um, you know, and rural gatherings like the local football, you know, like events similar to that, you know, and just how, how bad COVID and the drought have made it for people in rural places. Um, a lot of people don't realise, but I'm going to have a chat to Sal, and um, we're also going to touch base on, you know, just how important it is to, to have these type of events. Because without them, you know, we have our farmers that have been affected the last few years from drought, you know, and that's going to take a long time to recover from that, if any recover. So these local events that happen and need to happen are a great gathering point for farmers. It's a great gathering point for people to get together and talk and let steam off, you know. That's what it's all about as well. So let's cross over to Sal and we'll have a yarn about it all and, and see how things are going out there. And Sally joins me now. How are you going, Sal? Hi, Jason. I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Well, as I said, about, about as good as I bloody can get at the moment through this crazy time. It's just, it's insane what's going on in this big wide world at the moment, isn't it? Oh, absolutely crazy. Absolutely. <sighs> what What's next? Oh, I, I can't even fathom to think. Who would have thought no. this would have been happening? No, it's pretty shocking. So you're in Narromine, Sal, in my home area. How's things going out home? Yeah, pretty good. Um, all things considering, I guess, as good as we can be. We've had yeah. some nice rain, which was nice. Yeah. Yeah, no, it is lovely. I was out there a couple of weeks ago and I haven't seen it that green for yonks, oh, ages, beautiful. you know, and it's just so good to see some green grass floating around. And, you know, I've yeah. had a lot of people, I still had a lot of people say to me here in, in the city and that when I see them, you know, they go, oh, it's great to see so much rain out in the bush, you know, the drought must be over. <laughs> you sort of look at them and you go, oh, yeah, it's over, you know, but it's actually not, um, you know, people just, they just don't realise that, you know, because there's a bit of water in the dams and some feed shooting through, doesn't mean the drought's over, you know, and that's, that was one major thing and the point I keep pushing to people is um, they don't seem to realise that all the sheep and cattle that have to be sold off during these droughts so families can keep afloat, machinery, mm -hmm. certain things that's like right. that, they can't buy it back. No, that's right. You know, so there's still a lot of money sitting out there that, you know, that they have to try and make back some way, shape or form, so don't yeah, they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. rain's been beautiful, but unfortunately, it's definitely not the end of it. No, that's for sure. So you um, you guys are in the in the Narromine Jets footy club. Can you tell us a bit about the Narromine Jets? Yeah, so the Narromine Jets is a rugby league club. Now, we've been in Narromine, or the Jets have been in Narromine since before, around World War II started. So it's been in Narromine wow. for a long time. Um, yeah. Quite a diverse club. So we've got um, different levels. So we've got under-18s, we've got women's league tag, and we've got reserve grade and first grade. Um, so quite diverse club. Um, we play in the Group 11 competition. So we play against Dubbo, Parks, Forbes, um, Mingus. And I, I guess the thing that we're most proud of is we're really a community-focused club. Like we, we love to support the community that supports us. We love giving back to the community and, and doing lots of community-orientated things. Um, yeah. We're compute, all volunteers, so um, everybody that's um, involved in the club volunteers, so they all do it for the love of Narromine and footy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great, yeah. Sal. And, I mean, Narromine's only a little place. Mm. Um, you know, it's home to me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's it's only a small place. And COVID would have had a massive impact, like let alone the drought. But COVID, has it also had an impact in rural communities like Narromine, Sal? Yeah, it definitely has. So we haven't had a season this year because of COVID. Um so Group 11 have tried to do some modified seasons, but we have opted not to participate in those. We just couldn't see it being um, beneficial for our club, I guess, and viable. We needed to ensure that our club stayed viable to continue on through coming years. 
and, and we needed to ensure the health and well-being of, um, of our Jets family too. So, you know, our volunteers, our players, our sponsors, our supporters. So, yeah, it's weird not having Sundays at the footies. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's days like that that, that little communities like Narromine rely on too, you know. Yeah, like, and, and I know, like I remember going to footy games over the years and in Narromine, you know, and you had the local lines or rotary clubs and certain things like that having a snag sandwich there and a gold coin donation and helps the local charities you know and, yeah and everyone yeah. used to get down and buy a soft drink and certain things like that and, and watch the footy days and, and the games yeah. you know and it's it's events like this that are happening in the world that you know they affect everything from major businesses to little rural communities but it is the little rural communities that are the ones that are actually taking it harder than Absolutely. anything because the money's just really- not there it, no, that's right. And it's a really family-oriented club, so it's a really fun day out. The, um, you know, the, the kids come down, they watch the footy, they play, you know, mums catch up with their friends, the dads watch the footy. So even that social networking and that connection is really lacking as well, and that's so important in, you know, for mental health and well-being is that social interaction as well. Absolutely, Sal. So sponsorship... For, for the Jets has been the hardest thing to get things off the ground this year? Yeah. So, I mean, we, we have a really um, loyal sponsorship base, which we're, you know, extremely thankful for because we, we can't function without those. No, that's right. But yeah. they've struggled as well. You know, they've been hit by the drought and then COVID. Um, you know, our major sponsor is the Narromine USMC. You know, they were shut down really early in the pandemic. So... It's been really difficult for them. And now whilst they're operating, they're certainly not operating at full capacity. And we have lots of little local family businesses that sponsor us as well. And, you know, they just don't have disposable income or cash that they've previously had. So, you know, we've had to try and come up with other ways to try and get money for the club, I guess, to keep functioning. Yeah, it's it's absolutely it's devastating for things like that because you know, even we look at Narromine and Narromine is a very very strong community as yeah, I know. Absolutely. And you know when when the Narromine teams are struggling, you can only imagine what's happening elsewhere in other communities. You know because Narromine is such a family friendly orientated town. Everything's about the local, you know, the businesses and and the and the footy teams and the the events that happen locally for the oh, community. Absolutely. It's an amazing community, um, you know, and, and so well known for when times are tough, the way they pull together to help each other out. Um, yes. You know, it's an amazing community that, you know, people are so lucky to be part of. And, yeah, it's times like this when you realise that when things can't happen that you kind of realise how lucky you are. That's exactly right, So 100%. So yourself and, and Anthony, your husband, you guys work in the local government there, do you? Yeah, we do. We both work for local government. Um, we're lucky, I guess, we're in a unique position working for local government because you get to do a job that you're passionate about, but you get to commute, c- contribute directly to your community at the same time. Not a lot of jobs have that opportunity. So, yeah, we're lucky that we get that opportunity. Absolutely. And Anthony's family have been involved in, in the Jets Yeah. for decades have they lots of years so really? um, <laughs> yeah Anthony's dad held oh, many positions on the Jets committee he was a president secretary treasurer um, his mum was on the women's auxiliary for many years um, obviously Anthony and I are both on the committee um, his brother John's on the committee uh, my niece Alexi, she helps me with the Jet social media, so the Instagram posts and things. Lexi, um, she helps me with that. Lovely. Our nephew, nephew Zach's a ball boy, so. <laughs> yeah, great, awesome. Yeah, yeah that's great. Uh, Sal, so lots Sal, of families that have a lot of family connections through the club. It's really awesome. It is, and it, and, it, and as I said, and as we've said a heap of times about the Narromine and, and the local community of the Central West in general, um, you know. The whole area is like family. Yeah. You know, and, and the whole the sponsorships, the local businesses, everyone puts their hand up to help when someone's in trouble. But it's times Absolutely. like this where no one's got the financial, you know, um, backing to be able to help. And, and it's even, just, it's not even just financial either. It's, um, you know, if someone's struggling on hard times, 
you know, and you want to hold a fundraiser and yeah. and raise a bit of funds to help them out. You, you can't even do that now they because can't. of restrictions on gatherings and stuff like that. So there's so many different aspects that make it really difficult to maintain that community feel, I guess. Yeah. Sal, so if, there's, if there's anyone watching this that may want to put some dollars towards an RM1 Jets, are you the person to contact with that? Is there a website? Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely would love that. Um, we were actually having a um, a ball this year um, and that obviously got called off. Um, so now we really want to have that next year. But what we want to do is we want to do it so we raise lots. We're do, applying for grant funding and sponsorship so we can make the ticket price as small and minimal as possible because we want to get as many people to the function as we can, because it's just going to be so important, um, you know, for businesses in town, for that um, economic stimulus that we're going to need, as well as um, everybody's individual health and well-being going through the pandemic, being in, you know, restrictions, health and well-being. It's going to be such an important event in not only for the Jets, but the community as a whole. So Absolutely. So um, I missed that. When, when was, when's this? When are you looking so at So we this? don't actually have a date. Um, no. We had one, we had to postpone it. Of course, um, yeah. So we're kind of watching the restrictions and the New South Wales health advice closely so we can hold it probably next year now. Yeah. Um, you know, we booked Eric Growth and the Gurus to be our entertainment and we had some really cool stuff happening and we'd love to be able to do that um, but allow as many people to come along as possible. So if there's any businesses out there that would love to help us out, I'd love to chat to them. Yeah, yeah, be sure to send me a message on my Facebook and I'll get it through to Sally or the Narrowmind Jets Facebook page or Instagram yeah. page. Please, Perfect. you know, any any dollar's good, you know, just to help Absolutely. raise money. To it's you know, help so little important. communities and, and little sporting clubs and, and you know, yeah. communities keep yeah. afloat. And, Sal, I, I've seen on here that you guys have got some Fijian players. <laughs> yeah. Living with you guys. Yeah. Now, how long have they been with you? And how, what do they reckon about Narromine and the, the drought and the bloody flooding? And now <laughs> what, well, they wouldn't know what's going off. on, would they? Yeah. So they were with us um, last season. So they've kind of like become our adopted children. <laughs> I bet, yeah. Um, yeah, no, they love Narromine. Um, I actually was chatting to them in advance of this interview, just going, you know, what what do you love the most about Narromine? And yeah. they just said, you know, they just really feel part of the community here. They've made so many friends um, and they just love being part of the Jets. They said they feel so welcome and, um, and the culture of the club and the community they just feel right at home. So yep. that was really nice to hear. Are, are these fellas young, Sal? Yeah, so um, around 27. Okay, yep. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great. Awesome. Yeah, so That's, yeah. I mean, it up been an eye opener for them. Had they, had they been to Australia, like, before this? Uh, one of them. A couple of them had. Yeah, okay. one hadn't. So... It's been an experience for them, lots of, um, you know, we've had a great time showing them, you know, different things about Australian culture and, and narrow mind and surrounding areas and stuff as well. So, you know, no, that's, that's fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I can imagine they would have walked straight in there going, okay, this is great. It would, would have been dry as anything out there then yeah. when they first got over here. Yeah. And then yep. COVID's hit and now there's yep. bloody roads closed with water over them. It's just... I know. And to come here to play football and, you know, and now all of a sudden they haven't got a season so they can't play football. It's Yeah. Yeah, it's probably, it's been quite strange for them, but um, but they're loving every minute of being in town and, and, you know, they've made some really great friends as well. So... Yeah. Sal, so, do you reckon, like, th through the whole, like, the drought process of it out there, mental health is a big thing at mm. the moment. Like... COVID's one thing for mental health, you know, because people are in lockdown in, in Victoria and we all were as well. Mm -hmm. And mental health is a massive, massive topic. When the Jets were playing and you get a couple of hundred people to a game and certain mm -hmm. things like that, that is, how does that lift people's spirits, you know, through the drought and things like that? Do you, do you find people come in just to get away from that? Yeah, I think it's that distraction and I think it's that social interaction. Um, you know, you can come in, you can have a beer with your mates and, you know, you can watch the footy and, you know, you can have a bit of a heckle on the sideline. That's and, right. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, you can, 
yeah, I think that's really important just to have that distraction. Yeah, and, no, it, it definitely is. And mental illness, you know, it doesn't discriminate. And I think there's such a stigma around it that doesn't need to be there. And I think we really need to keep those conversations going. And, you know, JETS are big supporters of our community. And every year we do an annual charity day where we pick local charities to raise funds for. Last year, the Dubbo Neighbourhood Centre was one of our beneficiaries. And, you know, they offer a lot of services, one of them being mental health support. Um, yeah. People just need to know that it's okay not to be okay and it's okay to ask for help. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. And someone said to me the other day, Sal, that, um, you know, people do hear a lot about the issues of, uh, you know, youth and mental health in rural communities. It's games like, you know, football games, charity events, events in local communities that do keep, you know, people's spirits up. Mm. What do you do? You have any recommendations for people at the moment as to what they can do to keep young people in their spirits up during this time? Oh, look, I, I'm no expert by any means, but I just think it's really important to have those conversations. And you know, if you think someone's not okay, you just need to be brave and ask that question. You know, yeah. Are you okay? And and they're not yeah. expecting you to solve it for them. It's just they know that someone's listening and there's so much support out there. You know, you don't even have to ring up to get support these days. There's so much online support, you know, like Lifeline and Beyond Blue have all got amazing websites, Black Dog Institute, where you can get so much information without actually having to ring up if you're not comfortable. There's text lines now where you can send a, a text message and, and a counsellor will text with you if you don't feel like... Um, talking to someone so I just really believe in having that first initial conversation and reducing that stigma and asking someone if they're okay yeah I agree and the thing is it, it is okay to not be okay yeah absolutely. You know, that saying is true you know I think like I've been I've experienced mental health problems there's many many yeah. people out there that do um you know and it's very it's normal it's, yeah. it's part of, I think it's part of life that everyone goes through times where you know, you don't necessarily know that you've got it necessarily no. until you get it bad, you know, yeah, or, or bad right. enough to know that you need to speak. But it's not weak to speak. No. Anyone can speak up. Absolutely. And, you know, and it, it doesn't can't... discriminate. And, you know, because we as a club haven't got that interaction that we would normally have at games, we're trying to use our social media platforms to keep the engagement levels up. And, you know, we ran a, a program recently where, we did name the greatest Jets team in history where we got all our followers to get involved and vote. Yeah, great. The clubs in our group seen us doing that and, and they all did a similar thing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we've been posting, you know, you know, Beyond Blue phone numbers and Lifeline and things like that, just reminding people that it's okay to be, you know, not okay and ask the question for help. It's so true. It's so true. And the biggest thing as well is to push that out to our farmers because, yeah. You know, Yes, it doesn't discriminate. Yeah. Exactly right, Sal. So what? So what are your hopes for the future plans for the Jets? Well, we're looking forward to hopefully having a, a season next year. Um, we're using this time to be quite proactive and um, build our frameworks and what we want to achieve with our club next year. Um, and of course, our ball and our reunion um, function that we're planning on holding is, is a big thing that we're planning as well. Yeah. Um, you know, we're applying for lots of grants and doing things like that to try and, like I was saying before, reduce ticket prices and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, like this year we had so many big plans. We, we'd um, applied for funding and we'd got a bus. So Jets have got our own bus now. Oh, so fantastic. We can go and pick players up that, um, you know, might not have a licence or might not be able to get to training. So we can go and pick them up and bring them to training just to expand that group of players and get more people involved. So um, we had really high hopes for this year, but that didn't happen. So we're hoping that will all carry over for next year. Yeah, well, that's right. Keep your spirits high, Sal, and, and everyone else yeah. out there because everyone's in the same boat at the moment. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I think the biggest thing of all is 
just to remember that we are all going to come out of the other side of this. Yeah, yeah. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it's, it ain't weak to speak, and that's 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 a saying, you know, that we all know, and, and it's so true, though. It's Absolutely. so true. And and please, if anyone out there, you know, wants to help support the Narrow Mind Jets, um, be sure to flick me a message across my social media or the Narrow Mind Jets Facebook page, um, you know, because everyone would be so, you know, appreciative of that. Uh, we would really appreciate difference. it. Absolutely. And it makes a lot of difference to, to little communities to have these type of events functioning, um, you know, just for people. And it just, it includes everything. It's local businesses when a couple of hundred people can come into a town. You yeah. Know, they, buy, they buy local, it, you know, as well as mental health to get people off their properties, to get people out of their house. It's so important. It's and, just a um, distraction. It's a, it'll be a fun night out. It'll be a distraction. And, and let's face it, we can all use it. <laughs> oh, bloody oath we can. Absolutely, yeah. Sal. Well, yeah. thank you so much for coming on for a chat. I really thank appreciate you. it. And, um, you know, I know it's a lot to ask for money at the moment with everything that's happening and for rural communities. But, yeah, you know, if you can, you know, if there's any businesses out there that do want to support, um, yeah. you know, shoot us the message. It'll, we really appreciate it. So Yeah, and, you know, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, monetary support either. We're, we certainly would love, you know, even if it was donations for raffles or auctions or anything like anything, that. You know, it yeah. all helps. It all Anything. helps. So, yeah. It does. Well, yeah. Thanks, Sal. Thank you so Thank much. You. All my Thank love to everyone out home. It's it's Thank great you. to speak to someone out home. And, um, yes. you know, I'll be out there. Let us know when that ball is. And we'll yeah, I was going to say, you, well, you might have to come and join it. I'd love to. I'd, yes. I'd love to, depending on where I am and what I'm Absolutely. doing. But I'd certainly love to be there, Sal. So, yes. we'll, we'll touch base with it, eh? Yeah, that sounds wonderful. Thank you very much. See Thanks, you, Sal. Kristen. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.